Chris Armstrong thought she'd be with her high school sweetheart her whole life. You know, I had made vows that I would um, be with him in sickness and health, and I took that very seriously. She and Brandon Smith were only married for two years when she received a call. Brandon had been in a car accident. They were unable to tell me if he was alive or not. After the accident, he was in a coma for two months. And when he woke up, the Brandon she knew was gone. But the love she still had for him had been transformed. When someone has a severe traumatic brain injury, in a big way, you lose that person, um, but you gain somebody new. And it took me a long time to realize that. For answers, she turned to her faith. I feel like God gave me a piece about moving forward and about deciding to continue to take care of Brandon. So she became his legal guardian. The judge asked her a specific question at one of the final hearings. What will you do if you have a family someday? Will you still be able to take care of Brandon? What will happen then? I told her nothing's gonna change. So when she met James Armstrong in 2014, the first thing she told him was about Brandon. I have a former husband that I take care of and he's a part of my life. And um, I realize that's a lot, but if uh, you're interested in dating me, that, that comes with the territory. Uh, I know a lot of people would probably find it like, um, kind of turn, a turn off to to hear that a woman is still taking care of her ex-husband, but it didn't bother me at all. And, um, in fact, it, it intrigued me more because I knew that Chris had a good heart. <laughs> in 2015, Chris and James got married and more than a decade after his accident, their love for Brandon has grown. Not only has he gained a new protector in James. You know, we love him the same. We love him unconditionally. The couple's children delight in the time spent with their uncle Brandon. But yeah, they adore Brandon, right? Like they fight over who gets, <laughs> who gets to get to him a drink, him. who gets to feed him, who gets to help him out. Like, and yeah, our kids, they love to snuggle with him on the couch when he's hanging out. Yeah, there's a lot of love. It's an unconditional love that other people have been moved by. I mean, we've been living out this, this story, this kind of unique family situation for about or I have for about 15 years. And I found that when I meet people, when I share my story and they share their stories, it's a way to connect. It's a way to share hope. His world got very small after his brain injury and it's sort of gotten bigger.